an orange collar. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. So there's two little black and tan girls. The one with the orange collar I thought would really suit a t-shirt. It's just a little bit softer in nature and I know that softness comes with a lot of thought. So I was looking just for that slightly softer nature uh, for a t-shirt. <laughs> Holy dooly. I'm Letitia Gray, 33 years old, and I live on Glenflory Station in the southwest Pilbara of Western Australia. I manage the property here with my mum and my partner, and I run a team of Kelpies, currently 15. Watch him! And we have a few marimers running around as well. Oh. Oh. I guess. Good girl. So I named my pup Gossip, or Gossip Girl for a minute there. She had a lot to say for herself when I first got her. Very yuppie. So Gossip seemed to suit, and it still suits her now. She's not quite as bad, but she's still quite opinionated, and she lets me know what she's thinking. She's a quirky little pup. Yeah, she's, we have lots of fun moments. Steady, Goss. Good girl. Well done, Goss. That's good. Don't get distracted. She's, um, she keeps life interesting, but she's got a lot of character and she's a good little pup. And one of the tricks that she loves to play on me is when I get out of the ute, she loves to lock the doors on me. And um, she, must, she must get nervous when I leave her alone because very often I'll come back to a ute that's been gassed out, so that seems to be her favourite trick. Oh, gosh. Gossip. Gossip. You little feral. Gossip. You think you're pretty clever, don't you? You do. You do. The thing that I find the hardest, at this point in time, it will be the weather because it is really hard to be able to make management plans and things when you really don't know what's coming. We're learning now to have a plan for whichever situations and you want to have steps in place early enough so that you can make decisions in time. So Glenflory Station is experiencing our fourth year of extreme drought of failed wet seasons and hoping that this one now isn't going to be a fifth. Uh, we are currently fully destocked due to the dry conditions and they won't be coming back unless we can get a decent rain and the country has a chance to recover. Normally we would run about two and a half thousand breeders, but our numbers are going to be kept down for a long time now as, as we try and recover from this drought. My dream would be to be able to run the property with a more focus on the regenerative side of things and utilising dogs, utilising our stock movement, maybe moving away from trucks. I would really like to now start running our cattle more as a single mob so that we can spell country more often, give it a chance to recover between grazing. But that's my overall goal with the dogs, is to be able to incorporate them more, to be able to improve as well. We're not just trying to maintain the country. What it is, we want to see it improve and just keep getting better. I did some research back into my great-grandfather because he had a station in 1945, I believe it was, and while I was looking for him, I found some archives in the Batty Library where they did an interview with him the year before he died. It's really surreal because obviously I never met my great granddad. He was so with it and talking about the station life and, and the dingoes and the sheep and the running of the station. He's someone I've heard a lot of stories about and he was just well ahead of his time. Yeah, I found some other information where he's done up and they were talking about how set stocking was overgrazing the country and he was doing a lot of land regeneration and rehydration that kind of thing so I wish I could have met him because he yeah he was an amazing man from everything I've heard I think there's a lot there for me to learn oh lord oh lord oh lord I never had anything to do with working dogs friends of mine encouraged me to go to a working dog school all right all right all right and it was after that school, it was with Neil McDonald, 
Very good dog. And at the end of that school, I said, hey, I, I want to put together a team of dogs. Can you help me out? And that was the start of it. So the Maramas are an Italian shepherding dog. We use them here for protecting our wieners against predation by wild dogs and dingoes. Their natural instinct is to scare off a predator rather than engage an attack. So I have three. Uh, one is the female, Angel. She's my failed Marima. She lives here at the house. Rafe, this way, Rafe. And the other two boys, which is Ringer and Rafe, they live up with the wieners. They're a great addition. I absolutely love watching them work. They're a working dog in a completely different way. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely love my dogs. I probably love my dogs too much and they take advantage of that. Uh, there's bows in some way, but to me, I want my dogs to work that bit extra for me because they want to. And I think if you've got their hearts, not just their mind, you're going to get a lot more out of them. What they love most to do is work. Just wait. At the end of the day, all they really want is a feed, a pat and a chance to do it again. That is what they live for and they absolutely love it. <laughs>